Phil Woolery with Purdue Extension and I'm out here today with a tulip tree. I'm going to talk about a, a pest on tulip trees that I've been getting a lot of calls about this year. So what we're going to talk about is tulip tree scale. Scale insects um, are not very well seen. They don't move around a lot. So basically, uh, generally in the scale insect life cycle, the, when after their eggs hatch, they'll crawl around a bit and then they usually uh, will attach to uh, a plant, in this case we're talking about a tree, um, and then they start sucking out the, the juices out of the tree or plant, whichever, whatever we're looking at. And then they kind of stay put and attach themselves permanently. So they're kind of like, um, you know, think about it, us ticks. Uh, well, you know, they'll suck the blood out and these are sucking the, the juices out of the tree. So these insects, they attach to the branches. Um, other scale insects can attach to leaves, um, but in this case they're attached to the branches and they'll start sucking it out. And as they suck out that photosynthate that the leaves are producing, that the tree's moving through there, um, <clears throat> their waste product is what we call honeydew. So it makes it sound like uh, uh, kind of nicer than what it is. Um, but anyway, so this honeydew is sugar rich and it'll fall down and then you might have felt that. Um, it felt kind of like a mist um, falling down on you. But what that happens, when that happens, we get, um, it can fuel the, the, the growth of sooty mold. You can see these, this black growth on these leaves. The, the, that black growth is feeding on the honeydew that these scale insects um, drop down and uh, it, it can grow on the grass. Um, if it's on your car, it can grow on your car or, or lawn chairs or your deck. So it's, it's not, the only harm it will do is on leaves, if, it's, if it uh, covers it up and the leaf can't get sunlight, then that leaf will die. But it's not actively feeding on the leaf. So here we can see on our branch these, these bumps, which are actually the scale insects. And under there, at this point in their life cycle, um, these are the female ones, and they've all reached the end of their life cycle, but they have laid eggs underneath their, their kind of protective covering. And you can pick those off, and they come off pretty easily now. And, and there's not a lot. Early in, earlier on, it would have been kind of juicy in there. You also notice the branch is very dark, and it's covered in sooty mold here. So, um, so soon those eggs are going to be hatching and entering the crawler stage and they will, they will overwinter and then in the spring um, they're going to uh, attach themselves in different spots and, and continue their, their life cycle that way. So that crawler stage is a time you want to treat them. You want to, um, so different options for that, you can use a conventional insecticide. Um, you'd have to spray that. The, um, challenge with that is twofold. If you have a large tree, it's going to be hard to get that insect spray into the, uh, the branches. And also, you're also going to kill beneficial insects as well. So in insects that are, that are helping you out killing these, these other, um, <clears throat> killing the, the, the crawlers. Another option would be a, um, a safer product like a insect growth regulator, and that will that will kill the the crawler stage without harming our beneficial insects. Again, our challenge is you'd have to spray if you have a large tree, getting that spray up into the canopy. Uh, another challenge, another option would be to do a soil ap applied insecticide. And some of these would typically be a neonicotinoid insecticide that you'd apply at the surface or the base of the tree, and that tree would would take that up and and then uh, it would go throughout the tree. According to our specialist on campus, he does not think that that's very effective in controlling these. It typically concentrates more in the leaves, and these don't feed so much in the leaves. And then another problem with that is. Um, our tulip trees, they, they have 
beautiful flowers. You might not see them because they're in the top of the tree, but the, that neonicotinoid insecticides can also harm pollinators. So that's another risk you have to, to weigh when you're looking at different treatment options. Another option for reducing the population of these scale insects is, with non-chemical means is pruning off the branches. If you remove a branch with a large population, they will not be able to, to, to reproduce and spread to different parts of the tree. And in this case, I'm going to do that because we have uh, these, these branches are kind of low, getting shaded out, getting in the way of the mower. So um, I can accomplish two things at, at once here. So now those crawlers and eggs that will hatch will not be able to reinfect different parts of this tree. So as is often the case, when you get a large population of, of insects, you're going to have other populations increase of things that eat those. So in our case, um, you can have higher populations of, we, the, these high populations of these scale insects can attract things like wasps or uh, ladybugs that are going to feed on them. So we might have a big population boom this year, but um, uh, the natural predators will come in and kind of put, put uh, get the population down. So you might not have the problem next year. So an option or, you know, doing some physical things like doing some pruning uh, to remove some of the population combined with the natural predators, um, we might not have this problem next year. So that is always an option um, to wait and see. So if you have any questions on, on managing these types of insects or any other tree problems, you can reach out to me in the comments below or reach out by email or call the office. So this is Phil Wooler with Purdue Extension and have a good day.